Enjoying secrets of a sugar daddy? How about a little something extra? Here's today's dose of extra sugar with Marcus. Hey, this is Marcus, and welcome to this segment of Extra Sugar. All right, I need your help. So I had a situation happen, and I need to know if I did the right thing or the wrong thing and what you would have done in this situation. So message me on our website, secretsofasugarday.com, or you can email me at sosdpodcast at gmail.com. Or even better, go to our Instagram page and direct message me there at Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. All right, so here's the story. My current and regular sugar baby was out of town on a nice Hawaiian vacation without me. And even though we have been together for over a year, we are still still both on Seeking. Now, I haven't been on there for a long time because Seeking deleted my account and wouldn't let me back on. But I found a way. I got back on. It's it's very simple, but it is active as of the last few weeks. And so I'm finally able to read messages and talk to other people on there. So for the last 10 days, my main sugar baby being gone, I decided, you know, I'm going to meet some people, go out, have some drinks and sushi, and just enjoy the evening. Well, I set up a date with this cute young Latina who had just moved to our area from California. And I set it up earlier in the week and uh, confirmed with her and said, okay, let's meet at 8 p.m. on Thursday. Now, I set it up at 8 because I have an event at my club until around 7. And I told her 8 p.m. should work fine, but if for some reason my event runs long, I'll let you know. And she said, fine, just let me know, and then we can push it back if needed. So no problem. Well, comes Thursday, and I actually get a text from her confirming that Thursday, that today is still good. I said, yes, absolutely. I expect to be done at around 7, and I'll see you at 8 p.m. I go to do the country club event, and sure enough, it's over right on time. I get home at 7 p.m., and I message this girl and say, hey, I'm jumping in the shower. My event just got over, but I should be there right on time. Well, within a few seconds, my phone rings, and up pops a caller ID with a first and last name. Well, I had never talked to this girl on the phone, so I'm thinking, oh, well, this is her, and here's her first and last name, which I actually hadn't even asked for her name at that point yet. So she says, hi, now, are we meeting at 8 or 9 p.m.? And I said, no, 8 8 p.m., I'll be able to make it there in time. She says, oh, I thought it was at 9 because I thought maybe your event was going to run long. But that's fine. I live close by. I can throw on a dress, and I'll see you then. I said, great. After we hung up, I noticed that I hadn't asked her name. And I said, well, what am I going to call you? And she gave me a name. And then I jokingly said, well, the caller ID popped up this name. And she goes, well, yeah, that's actually my real name. And we laughed about that because she gave me her real phone number which I always advise to get a secondary number like Google Voice. You don't want to be giving out your real number in the very beginning. But nonetheless, I was ready to go, and I got to the bar at around 7.53, 7.54, just like I like to do about 5, 10 minutes early, and I grabbed us a seat at the bar. Sure enough, at 8 o'clock, she promptly came in, and we do appreciate when women are not... 15, 20, 30 minutes late as I've experienced and she was um, on time and she walked in, had this beautiful dress on, it was low cut, very busty, she was a bubbly Hispanic girl, looked like she had a great personality and found me immediately at the bar and we just hit it off. The chemistry was good, we were laughing, telling stories, she's touching my leg And just to preface this, I had told her also that I would compensate her just for showing up because I do appreciate the time and effort that girls take to put themselves together, drive over there to meet for drinks. And I didn't used to always be that way. Sometimes I compensated, sometimes I didn't. But now I I pretty much always do just a little token of appreciation. It doesn't have to be much, but they, they do appreciate something. So I'd already told her that I would give her a little financial gift just for showing up and then we could go from there 
So as the night was going along, I noticed that she was texting somebody, and I was just teasing her, saying, oh, are you already texting your getaway plan? And then I told her some funny stories about my co-host who, well, actually it wasn't that funny, but who got left at a bar. And then there a couple other times when my one of my co-hosts asked me to call her in about 10 minutes and say that there was an emergency and she so she could get away from one of her dates that wasn't going well. So we shared a couple stories like that and laughed. And then she said, well, I've got to go to the restroom. And we'd had a couple drinks each by this time. So when she came back from the restroom, we're sitting there. We had a little bit left in our glasses. And then the bartender came over and asked if we wanted another one. Well, the night was still very young. We'd only been sitting there for about an hour, an hour, 15 minutes. And the conversation was going fantastic. Now, I've been on enough first meet and greets and enough days to know when things are going good and things are not going good. And there was no red flags whatsoever. We were having a great time, much better than I'd had on my earlier dates that week. So it was very refreshing. The conversation was fantastic. So I went ahead and ordered another drink, and I looked at her, and she goes, no, no, I'm, I'm good. And I thought, huh, well, that's interesting because it's still night, but you know, maybe she's just cutting herself off. Well, about 10 seconds later, she looks at me and she goes, hey, I've got to run. It's a, you know, I've got to work in the morning. And I'm like, what? You've got to run already? It's only like 9.15. And we just got there at 8. And she says, well, it's like a school night to me. And so she, she gets up, kisses me on the cheek, and starts walking away. And I said, hey, how, how am I supposed to send you the the financial gift i said how am i supposed to send this to you and she as she's walking away she goes oh just sell it to my number and then i look at the bartender who's starting to bring my drink and i just glance over to the door and she's practically running out the door like very hurriedly so i sat there like a fool with my drink in my hand an empty seat beside me the bar was full watching her run out the door, and I thought, what in the world just happened? I was at a complete loss, had no idea why she would be in such a hurry to leave. Now, she did say that she had some friends that were in Old Town at the time, so I thought, well, maybe she's running out to meet them. Um, Maybe she had an Uber waiting and she was already late, but then she would have said something about that. Or maybe she had just double booked dates that night and was running really late on her second date. I don't know. It was so strange to me because she had called me and thought that we were going to meet around 9 p.m. So for her to run out before 9.30 p.m. and say that she had had to go to work and had to go home because of work the next morning just seemed very odd. So as I sat there and drank my drink by myself and then headed home, I did not send her anything because I thought that was very rude. No explanation, really, or the explanation she gave me just didn't add up. And so I'm driving home and I get a text from her right before I get home and it says, hey, are you okay? And I didn't answer. And then I went to bed. And then about right before midnight, she sends a question mark, like, you know, hey, what, what's up? And I didn't answer. And then as I'm laying there sleeping, or actually trying to sleep, I looked at her prof. I wanted to look at her profile one more time, and I noticed I was blocked on Seeking. So she had blocked me. So I definitely wasn't going to send her any financial gift after that. But I'm just wondering, what would you guys have done? It was such a strange interaction. Now, I've had many a meet and greet go bad. And I've had people end them and say, yeah, I just don't, I'm not feeling it or I don't think this is going to work. And we both go our separate ways. I'm a big boy. I can take it. And I've done it on my part too. But things were going so well and the conversation never stopped. And we laughed so much and we were having so much fun. I have never had an experience like that where I didn't really know what to do in the end. So that was one of my fun little dating stories this week. And you just never know what you're going to get on this site. All kinds of personalities, all kinds of situations. I guess that's why it's 
a little bit addictive because when you show up, you just never know how it's going to go. Anyway, that's it for today's Extra Sugar. I hope you enjoyed that little story. True story coming from Marcus and his dating adventures on Seeking and other sugar dating sites. If you want to share your crazy sugar dating stories, questions, or thoughts, go to our website, secretsofasugardaddy.com, and please leave us a five-star review on Apple or Spotify. We really appreciate the feedback on that. Okay, until next time, bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed your extra sugar with Marcus. As always, visit our website, secretsofasugardaddy.com, to comment or tell us your story. 